Now, sometimes, brothers and sisters, our heart is uh, fragile. Sometimes it may uh, become a reason why we stumble, and it may come. Uh, it may be also a reason why we uh, s- strive more, in, especially in our faith. Now, today, I will give you amazing fact. The word heart. Uh, was mentioned numerous times in the Bible in different uh, versions. You have seen it in your screen. So I do not need to mention it. So as what you have seen, brothers and sisters, heart were mentioned many times. So now let's study the etymology of the heart. Heart as a noun is an the spelling of heart was different in an old english uh, it spells h e o r t e but the meaning is still the same now this this meaning was used by the king james version the elizabethan kind of english that when you see the word heart in the king james version this is what the um writer or the author means it is the soul the spirit the will the desire the courage and the mind and the intellect it's not the anatomical um, meaning of the heart in which this uh, muscular organ in our body but it means the intellect the soul and uh, the carriage or it refers to our mind now in 15th century the spelling were cha- was changed uh, up to this moment, uh, the, the, the spelling was a uh, word changed from O H E O from E A. So until now, we use that and we use the pronunciation, the, the, the spelling of the heart up to this moment. But don't you know, brothers and sisters, uh, when someone asks you, how will you draw the shape of a heart? So we sometimes uh, draw the the two curve like this, and I know there are some of us who are in Korea or a fan of uh, K drama. This is the symbol. I think this is the symbol of the heart. But don't you know that the shape, um, the reference of that conventional shape, was made or uh, made popular way back in 1744. Now. I have also here 10 amazing facts about the heart. The first one is, don't you know that your heart will beat about 115,000 times a day? Then your heart pumps about 2,000 gallons of blood per day. The next is, the heart can continue beating even when it's, when it's detached from the body. That's why when a heart transplant, when a heart from another, uh, from a donor, will be extracted and put into the um, recipient's heart or recipient's body, the heart still beats. And the first uh, heart disease ever discovered, uh, identified, it was identified in a 3,000 year old Egyptian mummy. And don't you know that most of the heart attack happens on a Monday? So be careful. So if you are experiencing some of this or some of the um, symptoms of if you are practicing those predisposing factors that will lead to a person to undergo or experience heart attack, be careful on that the second day of the week, the Monday, because most of the heart attack happens on that day. Next is a woman's heart beats slightly faster than a man's heart. So that is why maybe I think women fall in love easily. That's what they said. But according to the fact that woman's heart beats slightly faster than men. But the uh, argument is still on that who who among uh, male and female uh, get in love easily or fall in love easily. Then the seventh is death from a broken heart or a broken heart syndrome. Sabisaya uh, panigibuwagan or was left by a lover is possible but extremely rare. 
So there are some studies that a heart attack sometimes uh, a broken heart sometimes categorized uh, be, uh, belongs to a uh, heart attack but it, extremely rare. So if you were to stretch out your blood vessel it's this, uh, blood vessel it would extend over 60,000 miles. So heart cells now uh, I, I, I graduated uh, in Bachelor of Science in Nursing last 2010. And up to this moment, I'm still uh, practicing uh, partially that profession because I, I uh, shifted into the academy. Now, I seldom or I never heard a case which is a heart cancer. And this is the reason why heart cells stop dividing which means heart cancer is extremely rare. And up to this moment, I haven't heard a single person experiencing this kind of disease because the cell of the heart uh, cannot undergo binary fission that will proliferate in our uh, system that will uh, advance the cancer. And the last one is laughing is good for your heart. It reduces stress and it gives a boost to your immune system. And now the, the, the 10 uh, facts this is biblical, and we will touch this later. Now, I have a question. Brothers and sisters, what important thing happened in your life last year? Or have you ever recalled uh, some event that affects your life in the past year? Some of them, or some of the people, or even in the social media, they posted that the 2020 was the worst year in history. I know some of you might agree, and some of you will disagree, but let's leave it. Uh, uh, let's uh, leave it there that this statement was posted in the social media. The 2020 was the worst year in history. Now, all bad things happened in the 2020. I have listed here um, several incident maybe some of you might relate or may not but as we go along uh, i will show it to you the first one if you are familiar with this picture this happens in australia the wildfire if you have seen the report in the news in the tv in the internet or whatever flat platform you will see the magnitude of the wildfire happens in australia Many of them were affected and they considered it as a worst uh, time or year ever. That's the worst uh, wildfire, or I think this is their first time, or I, I, I don't recall. I haven't seen or read any statement, but, but I have seen that they consider it 2020 as the worst year. One of the reasons why is the wildfire in Australia. The second one, have you, if you are uh, familiar with this picture, this is... Uh, the picture after the incident or the big explosion in Beirut. Now, it reaches, the news it reaches even here in the Philippines that uh, many were affected, some, some of them died, and many establishments and uh, jobs were affected uh, because of that great, or, or that big explosion happened in Beirut. And this third one, I personally were, affected and it broke my it broke my heart to those who are um, a basket basketball enthusiasts you may relate and this picture was uh taken in the place where a helicopter accident uh one of the famous um basketball athlete or a basketball player died in a plane crash together with his daughter and several friends and this, uh, this is their picture. I uh, grab it in the in their site in the Lakers site. I consider twenty twenty uh, a worst um, year because of this. One of uh, this is the first reason why I consider it because I'm a big a big fan of this person, this basketball player, Kobe Bryant. And it really broke my heart. I did cry because um, of that accident. Next, that most of us will relate is COVID-19. Don't you know that COVID-19 supposed to be not COVID-19? Oh
called COVID 2021 or 21 because um, it started 2019 until now we're still suffering. That is why we are doing this virtual worship because of this um, incident or because of this virus. So most of us now can relate to this incident. Many of us uh, may be affected, especially those uh, those jobs, those shops that were closed. Some of us are um, being uh, um, some of us are struggling, especially financially. That's why, or because of this incident, or because of this. Um, Mm, virus. Now, a COVID-19, a Christian response. I've seen this post in the social media and most of us, there are many um, uh, Christian who use this word COVID-19 and make it an acronym, but I haven't seen, uh, it passed in my wall, newsfeed, but I haven't seen it anymore. But, but I know they're still there, that they, they use every letter, every character of that COVID-19 into a scriptural or a Bible-based response. Now, based on what, there are many, but I just listed a few. But based on that incident, brothers and sisters, let me ask you again, how is your heart today? Sometimes we ask ourselves, what, what, what is the plan? What, what is God's plan for me? What is, uh, what is the plan of God? Uh, what is the plan? What, what is God's plan for my life? Now, don't you know, brothers and sisters, God wants us to have three kinds of hearts. That is why I ask. Sometimes our heart, we feel heartbroken. We feel uh, dismayed, discouraged because of an incident or a situation that we are we are at or we're about to experience sometimes we are as a christian especially uh late last night we prayed especially in the confession uh, we ask god to forgive us sometimes in our life we took these little compromises in our faith because because of our heart's desire, because this heart, our heart is, as what the Bible said or described, a deceitful one. So, in order for us to continue living for Christ, God wants us to develop these three kinds of heart. Now, if you have a Bible with you, these three kinds of heart uh, will be found in our key text. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 to 18. So as we go along, the first heart God wants us to develop. Now, before I will read you our script, uh, the the main text that we are focusing today. First is be joyful always. Second, First uh, Thessalonians five seventeen, pray continually, and First Thessalonians five verse eighteen is give thanks in all circumstances. Now, in this verse alone, God wants us to develop these three kinds of heart. Why? Because God knows along the way we may stumble. Along the way, Satan's uh, tactics or temptations and, and trials will be amplified because he knows, Satan knows that his time is uh, shortened, that, that, that Jesus soon return will appear or will be happening. That is why he will activate all his tactics and amplify all his snares in order for us to fall down and to be backslided or or to be or to forget forget God or or worst of all blame God. That is why God is encouraging us to develop these three kinds of heart. The first heart that God wants us to develop is found in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It says, always be joyful. So God 
wants us to develop a happy heart. When trial comes, temptation comes, if you develop this heart, Satan will never succeed. Now, one of the uh, Bible character that developed this kind of heart was, uh, according to the Bible, Proverbs 7, 17, 22, a joyful heart is a good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bone. Now, one of the example, a biblical character is, if you know this person, um, a well-known king and a very talented one playing harp, that is King David. King David, he said that the word blessed in, in the Psalms means happy. The phrase used might indeed be rendered hail to the man. So David wrote the psalm and another, uh, not all, but most of the psalms written in that, uh, in that book was written by David. Uh, many times he mentioned blessed, blessed. He means uh, happy is the man. Happy is the man who endured temptation. So the psalmist is not speaking of a good man as happy because he's aiming at happiness, but as being so because he follows the law of God and finds joy therein without seeking for joy to itself. He once said, he delight the Lord's law. He is happy. He is blessed by God's law. So King David develop this kind of heart, a happy heart, that during the times of his affliction, during the times of his trouble, we know during the times of his fall, his temptation, he still prays and he still uh, uh, develop and manifest this kind of heart, a happy, a happy heart. That is why he was tagged as a, a man close to God's heart. Now, the second heart God wants us to develop is found in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It says, never stop praying. God wants us to develop a prayerful heart. Why? He said in Jeremiah 29 verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Now, God wants us to develop a prayerful heart because don't you know, when you pray, Satan trembles. And don't you know also that prayer will let Satan go or will make you away from Satan or Satan will make you away from God. So prayer will let Satan go or Satan will let you go of prayer. So be careful. And let's pray for God that he will give us the spirit of a prayerful heart will instill in us a prayerful heart that whatever trials may come, we will never tremble or we will never shake because our faith is anchored to our living God. Now, prayer is very important in our, in our life, especially as missionaries. We develop this practice, the, the institution instilled to us, I still, I can still remember after we have a devotional, I, I know you can relate, that after the devotional, we went to, this, to the prayer garden. We spent 30 minutes just praying. And I keep on uh, re-echoing that, that experience here in our place that God want us, wants us to develop a prayerful, a prayerful heart. Because prayer is power. The more you pray, the more power God will give you. Now, one of the Bible characters who manifests this kind of character is Daniel. Don't you know, in the book of Daniel, shows that Daniel is a prayerful man. Here are some of the accounts of Daniel. In Daniel 6.10, Daniel's habit was to pray three times a day, kneeling by a window in a privacy of his room. This prayer is not uh, the three times a day meal prayer. But this is a personal time with God. He, he give God time 
three times a day. So, and another um, account is in Daniel 10, 12. And this, this statement will encourage us to develop a prayer for health. Why? Because when Daniel saw this um, vision, he prayed for explanation. And then angel Gabriel came down from heaven and said, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words or prayers were heard. Is it, isn't it beautiful that from the first word that comes out from our, from our mouth, God hears it already. So God wants us to develop a prayerful heart. And the last heart God wants us to develop is found in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. And everything gave thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Now, what kind of heart God wants us to develop this time? A grateful heart. Now, when trial comes, instead of blaming God, you thank Him. When troubles stumble in your way or you may stumble into a trouble or snare of Satan, be thankful. Thank God for giving you this kind of situation. Don't you know why God gave us trials and because of two things. First is, uh, he said, count it all joy. I think it's in James 5, uh, 1 verse 2, that count it all joy, brethren, if you stumble in many diverse trials, because it will develop patience, it will develop endurance, and it will strengthen our faith. And the second one, why, God's us, why God uh, leads or give us trials, because it happens in Job, I think Job 1 verse 8, that he... He presented with proud, uh, uh, boastfully to Satan. Look at my servant. He is faithful to me. So it is happy. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we should be happy when trial comes to our life because Jesus, our God, put his pride in us. He said to Satan, you can tempt the 37th batch. You can tempt all my senior missionaries. But I know that they will prevail in me. So that's why, that's the two reasons why, give us, why God gave us trials. So God wants us to develop this kind of heart, a grateful heart. And a great example, according to Psalms 9.1, I will give, give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. So this verse is so powerful that we should thank God in every situation that comes in our life. And this one, the best example of this heart is no other than our dear Jesus Christ. Many accounts in the Bible uh, tells us how grateful Jesus was. So, Many of them, but I just let, uh, put there three. In Matthew 15, 36, uh, this incident happens in the mountain, the feeding of thousands. So he asked, uh, do you have food? And his disciples, yes, dear Lord, we have this, this food. And it's just this uh, five loaves, uh, uh, seven loaves, or just a few loaves and fish. So Jesus told them, give it to me. But before God gave it to the people, what he did was he thanked God. And he took the seven loaves and fishes and gave thanks. He said, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessings. And after that, he fed the multitudes. And Luke 29, 19, this, is, uh, th this scenario was, um, ha uh, it happens in the upper room. In the Passover, that, and what is the well-known now uh, uh, scenario or scene or uh, event as the Last Supper? Jesus took the bread. When he took the bread, he gave thanks and gave it to his disciple. 
And this 11, Matthew 11, 25, this incident happens right after Jesus sent his 12 disciples to, to evangelize. Then after that, he called them. He said, at the time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them unto the babes or to the little ones. So as we've seen, Jesus developed a grateful heart. In every situation that he's in, Jesus always gave thanks to his Father. That is why God wants us to develop a grateful heart. Now, a biblical concept of thanksgiving. Why God wants us to develop this, um, uh, this uh, attitude or the spirit of thanksgiving is Thanklessness is a mark of unbelief. It is found in uh, Romans 1.21. It says, They did not honor God or give Him thanks. So whatever situation that we me at at this moment, we should give thanks to the Lord. Because as if we did not give thanks to the Lord, it means we did not honor Him. Next. Thanklessness is a mark of the last days. Now, people is ungrateful. People, during this time, we consider our time is uh, the last days. We consider people are unthankful. According to 2 Timothy 3, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to, fair, to parents, and note this one, and thankful. So first is thanklessness is the mark of unbelief, and thanklessness is the mark of the last days. Brothers and sisters, we should develop this kind of character. And the last, the last, um, Biblical concept that God wants us to develop is thanksgiving is a mark of obedience to God. So if you are not thankful, it means according to the Bible, you are not obedient to God. According to 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and this is our key text, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now why? Why? So God word, God's word commands us to be thankful unto him in every situation. Second, giving thanks unto God causes us to. There are the three, the three effects or the three uh, character that will be developed in us or the, the, uh, the traits that will be developed in us if we develop this um, thanks, uh, thankfulness or gratefulness to the Lord. First, focus on what? God has done to you. I have read or I have heard uh, the uh, Mayan's um, testimony that he said that God's plan is, I think, is packed with pain. Uh, comes with pain, but it's packed with purpose. So focus on God, God, uh, what God has done to you. So let us remember, if you struggle this time, look at the past experiences, how God leads us through that situation. The second is depend on what God is doing. Now, this is the uh, the best part is on dependent, uh, be dependent on God. Now, Jacob developed this uh, impugnate character. Keep on asking God. God, uh, keep on um, relying on God, same as David, same as Daniel, and especially the same as Jesus. Keep on depending on what God is doing to their lives because he's, God said, or the Bible said, all things work together for a good to those who love God. But those who don't love God will not understand because trials and temptation is a, is a tool for us to develop this kind of character. 
some some of the people may say why are you happy when when you are you when you encounter troubles but what the bible said is spiritual things is spiritually discerned those only who are filled with the spirit of god will understand that what god is doing is for our own sake always and the last one is rejoice on what will do i have heard this i have this um Uh, favorite uh, writer in Mindanao. Maybe some of you may know this person, uh, Rumi Mahinay. I am fan of his uh, songs. And one of his songs caught me, said, sometimes God's way seems crazy. Crazy and foolish to see. But at the end, it comes out that his way is the best. No matter how hard it is, God's way is the best rejoice on what will do what will happen what will be the outcome have you seen the pattern of god's love god will lead us or god will give us trials that that will um help us to develop this kind of character but the end point or the outcome will be uh, uh magnificent should i say because we will we will be happy david was happy daniel was happy because he rely on god and especially jesus christ is happy because they de- they focus on what god has done they depend on what god is doing and they know in their heart that at the end it comes out that god's way is the best no matter how hard it is God's way is the best. Brothers and sisters, before I uh, uh, stop, let me leave you this um, statement. We need to undergo a heart transplant. Our heart may fail us, but if we undergo a heart transplant, Satan will never be victorious again in our life. Why should we say, I give you my heart. We keep on saying, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Instead, we should say, Lord, give me your heart. Let my heart beat with the heartbeat of God. Let my heart be broken by what breaks God's heart. God is chasing you. God is chasing us. Will you come to him? You need a heart. You need a heart transplant, brothers and sisters. We need a heart transplant, brothers and sisters. He wants to give us his heart. Let him wrap his loving arms around us and give us his heart. May this message, brothers and sisters, will encourage us to live for Christ. To live for his service. Whatever, whatever trials and temptation may come our way, we should keep on singing. I am happy in the service of the King. May our loving God will bless us more and may we each other so we'll see uh, may we will see each other in that heavenly home that God prepares for us amen amen thank you